Welcome to another video. I have tried to avoid using Vieta's formula in all of my videos because I had until today never talked about it. But now the wait is over. We're going to talk about Vieta's formula, which is one amazingly powerful formula when it comes to solving polynomial equations or finding properties of the roots of polynomials. We're just going to do whatever is relevant to solve equations or to factor. Let's get into the video. What is Vieta's formula? Let me just show you from this. This is the general form of a polynomial of nth degree. Let's take the leading, polynom the leading polynomial coefficient to be a sub n. The next one is going to be a sub n minus 1, and the degree is going to be n minus 1. And we keep going down like that until we get to the constant term at the end. Now, what does the formula say? Suppose r1, r2, tap, tap, tap all the way to Rn, we have n number of roots. Now, it doesn't matter whether the roots are real or imaginary. That's the crazy thing about this. Whether real, complex, or imaginary roots, it doesn't matter. What you do is, all of these roots, suppose are the roots. Number one, R1 plus R2, is the ratio of the second coefficient to the first, which is a n minus 1 over a sub n with a minus sign. This looks too easy. Well, again, it's not. we're not telling you what the roots are. We're just talking about when you add up all the roots. So the sum of all the roots is this divided by this. Let's do something more interesting. Let's do another one. Let's say you do R1, R2. You multiply R1 by R2, and then you multiply R1 by R3, and then you add it to R1. You keep going like that until you get to R1, Rn, and then you're done with multiplying with R1. You switch to R2, R3, R2, R4, R2, R5 until you get to R2, Rn. Then you switch to R3. You keep going like that until you get to the last one, say Rn minus 1, Rn. If you keep pairing them and you multiply them and you add up all those pairs, the sum is going to be the third coefficient divided by the first coefficient. You see, when we did this, it was just the, the second coefficient. Now that we have the pairs multiplied together, it's pairs of twos, well, pairs is twos, you're going to have this, n minus 2 over a. Don't forget this sign, this one will be positive, okay? It's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. You keep going like that. All you have to do is take note that the first is positive, the second is negative, the, the next one is going to be positive, negative. They keep alternating till you get to the end. If you multiply all the roots of this polynomial, R1, R2, R3, R4, you keep multiplying till you get to the very last one. Because there are n roots, because it's an nth degree polynomial, the product is always minus 1 raised to power n of the ratio of the constant to the beginning, a naught over a N. That's it. Now, this may look as if it's a trick until we see it. Let me write the general formula of Vieta's. I hope you can understand it, okay? I'm going to write the general formula for any of these that I've written, how you can plug it in and figure out what it's going to be. It might look a bit confusing, but you will understand it. So this is Vieta's formula, and it looks a bit confusing, but if you understood this explanation, then this is 
just a way to represent what we've said, that it works when all you're doing is adding individual roots. It also works if you have the product of the roots. It also works if you have the sum of, so here you're gonna have individual roots added up. Here you're gonna have pairs of roots added up. Here you have all of the roots multiplied together, but there's nothing else to multiply. So this is what you have. And if you look at the form, it fits the profile. Now, let's take an example to be able to use this effectively, a very simple example. One example, and this video will be over, and we can always come back to refer to this video as to the formulas that we have available. Before doing the sample problem, I would really like to just verify what we just claimed. So here we can clearly see what the roots of this polynomial would be, because this is in factored form. We're gonna have one root to be one, one root has to be minus one, and this one has to be two. So we clearly see that R1 equals one, R2 equals minus one, and R3 is gonna be two. We wanna verify that Vieta's formula works all the time for a cubic. Now we also have a cubic here. So before I use it for this problem, let's just do some verification. What I'm gonna do is distribute what I have here. Let's distribute these two first. It's gonna be x minus one times, this is gonna be x squared minus x minus two. Okay, equals zero. Let's do it one more time. We're gonna have x cubed minus um, x squared minus two x minus x squared plus x plus two. So we clean this up, we're gonna get x cubed minus two x squared. Um, this is gonna be minus x plus two is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's quickly do all the things we know. Firstly, we wanna find the sum of all three roots using Vieta's formula. Remember that it says r1 plus r2 plus r3 is equal to negative a sub n minus one over a sub n. So let's go to the polynomial that we're solving, this one. This is equal to, we're just verifying, it's gonna be minus, a sub n minus one is the second one, which is minus two divided by what is um, a sub n, which is this one, it's one. So your answer here is just two. Now let's go back to the answer we got. Remember we said this, this, and this is gonna give us the same thing. Is it true? Well, this is one plus minus one plus two. Well, that's equal to two. So that is true. R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3. Um, A sub N minus two over A sub n. a sub n minus 2 over a sub n would be, this is our a sub n minus 2, minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1 over 1, which is minus 1. We just have to quickly verify. What is r1 times r2? This times this is going to be minus 1. What is r1 times r3? That's going to be 2. And what is r2 times r3? It's going to be minus 2. Okay, so this gives us a uh, minus one, which is correct. So as you can see, the few ones we've done are correct. And remember what we said, that the final one is going to be, let's write the answer first. It's supposed to be minus one raised to power n times a naught over a n. So if we use this formula for the product of all of them, we're supposed to have minus one raised to power n, our n here is three, so that's be, that would be minus one raised to power three, which is minus one, and then the constant term is two divided by one, so times two, which is minus two. So we should get minus two when we multiply everything together. Is that gonna happen? It's gonna be one times minus one times two. Well, that's equal to two. <laughs> so R1, R2, R3 equals minus one times one times minus two, which gives us, sorry, times two rather, which gives us minus two. Okay, so we have verified using all of this that Vieta's formula actually works. We're gonna use it now to answer this very easy problem. Just once you start, it becomes interesting. So here we have A, B, C are the roots of this 
cubic polynomial and we're supposed to find the sum of the roots a b plus a plus b plus c we already know what to do it's going to be the ratio of this to this with a minus sign so for the first question we say that a plus b plus c is going to be minus this one minus negative 7 over 1 which is 7 we're done See how quickly you can do that? You don't have to solve the cubic polynomial. Second one is the product. I think we know the answer to that too. A, B, C is equal to negative one raised to power three times A naught. Um, what is gonna be minus 13 divided by one? So that's gonna be minus one times minus 13, which is 13. We're done with the product. Let's go to the next one. AB plus AC, plus, so this is now the product of the pairs that depends on the second coefficient because you're pairing. If you're doing the triples, well, it will depend on this, but we already did that. That's the triple. Do you see that? Okay, so now just the product of the pairs, we're gonna say one, two, three. We have AB plus AC plus BC is going to be with a positive sign, plus, minus, plus. So we don't need to change the sign. We don't need a minus in this case. So it's gonna be 36 divided by one, which is 36. So the formula works out. Now the last one, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. This one is a little uh, bit of a problem because we don't have a formula for the squares, but we can always generate it. What do we do? Go here. And manipulate the sum you're going to get something like this let's look at it now we know that a plus b plus c squared is going to be if you square this it's going to be a plus b plus c um, times a plus b plus c if we multiply this out see what we're going to get we're going to get a squared plus a b plus AC plus AB plus B squared plus BC plus AC plus BC plus C squared. That's what you need. And from here, we can get all the three squares that we're looking for in this problem. And that's it. And everything else is a pair. If you clean this up, you end up with A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus two of this pairs AC plus BC that's exactly what you have and this is a plus B plus C squared the nice thing is we already found this answer we already found this one we just need to find this guy so what is this guy a plus B plus C is 7 so this is 7 squared equals a squared plus B squared plus C squared plus 2 times, what is the sum here? What did we get? Right there, 36. So we got 2 times 36. So if we isolate this guy, number 4, we're going to get A squared plus B squared plus C squared is equal to 49 minus 72. And that gives us minus... 23. You now you might wonder, how could the sum of squares give you a negative? That means maybe these roots are not real. Remember, when you square an imaginary number, it turns negative. That must be the reason. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.